Okay. Hello, all you big cat lovers out there. It's me, Derek, and I am here in my state-of-the-art uh, studio, aka my apartment. And it's kind of, um, you know, it's kind of sparsely uh, decorated and a bit boring. That's why I have a Christmas tree <laughs> over here. I keep that thing up. Um, the story behind that is I, I work. I work out of state and I work far away from the care facility. This is where I spend all my time when I'm not with my family or with the cats. And um, I was working close uh, around Christmas time because weather doesn't care what the holidays are. You need weather forecasters to be around uh, during all manner of holidays. That's how that works. Um, but I was working around Christmas time and um, I was really bummed because I wasn't around, you know, Heidi and the kids or the cats or anything like that. And they actually traveled over here um, hundreds of miles and they, they surprised me. And uh, they, they furnished the apartment. I didn't have any furniture. It was really just, it was awful. I, just, I was a, just a complete mess. I just didn't have anything. And they put a Christmas tree up and I, I came home from work that morning and they were, they were here and they surprised me and it was the best, it literally was the best Christmas present I've ever gotten in my life. It just was. And, and I've gotten some pretty cool, uh, Christmas presents. I got a GameCube in like 2002 and it was pretty cool. And this even trumped that. Um, my oldest, Des, she made that for me. She did this because that's the name. That's the name that the kids have for me. They call me Pops. Um, I drew this. I drew this in high school uh, with pastels. I probably should hang it out. My parents they got the frame and they, they you know. But anyway, it's not the point of the video. The point is, I'm trying. Oh my gosh, I'm a mess. All right, the, this so exciting. The Pride Strong week long data, the results, the analyzed results are finally available. Oh my gosh. Oh, so exciting. So, I wanted to make a video for those of you out there who don't like to read. You know who you are. So, I'm going to make an engaging video to go through some of the information that is available on this infographic. Really quick, for those of you who do want to find it, of course, a link is going to be in the uh, video description. And you can also go to my Twitter account, at Big Cat Derek. You could go to the Big Cat Derek Facebook page. You can also go to the at True Pride Strong Facebook page. All this information is in all these different places. You can go to my Instagram account. It's actually linked in the top part of the Instagram account um, for now. But, um, yeah, video description, probably the best place to just go and just click on the link. All right, so... For those of them. Oh, also, um, really special shout out to uh, Joffrey Steinberg, Melanie Cohen. These two individuals, they're, they're, they're professional uh, data, data analyzers, and they, they, they helped me put this infographic together. I mean, they are just massively powerful brains, and I wouldn't have been able to do this project and make it so wonderful and make the presentation so amazing if it wasn't for them. Um, also, special thanks goes to... Uh, uh, Missy Maria, uh, Emily Smood, Kit Crispin, and uh, uh, Steve the Runner for helping out um, set up the event and helping to police the uh, uh, Facebook page and make posts and, and do stuff like that. Couldn't have done it without a um, dedicated team. But let's go through some of this information really quick. Again, for those of you who don't like to read. Okay, so what is the Pride Strong? Oh, I'm not going to go through like the big wall of texts. I mean, if you want, you can pause the video, you can read this stuff. Um, but really quick, let's just touch the main points. 59 Pride members, 248 volunteer hours, 35 organizations, and 670 animals were directly aided by the Pride Strong week-long event. That is pretty awesome. Um, and this goes into vol uh, volunteer demographics, the participant ages, uh, gender identity, all that stuff. And then we go into, like, the income. Like, like what would you say, like, your income is compared to those of, like, people in your, you know, general area? I wanted to get an idea for, like, the what types of people are, um, are have the ability and the desire to go out and give and, and give their time. Um, types of organizations served, uh, we have all of these different types. We have uh, 24 animal shelters, three rehab and release, two exotic animal sanctuaries, two spay and neuter programs, one animal assisted therapy organization, one veterinary hospital, one independent volunteer for wildlife preservation, and one pet fair, which totals up to 670 animals. 
and uh, these all these different organizations that they helped um, ultimately serve about 100 close to 150,000 animals each year which is the, again like a lot of people they don't realize like how much um, some of this stuff will really truly add up when you have a whole bunch of people that are working together working in unison um, to to pool their their impact that's what I wanted to do with this whole whole pride strong thing but this goes into this is the number you know domestic cats the number of uh, that dogs big cats 25 squirrels 22 birds 20 <laughs> this number made me kind of giggle like 20 possums it's a lot of possums just a whole bunch of possums having a possum party um and uh, eight horses 104 other animals to include porcupines groundhogs mice sea otter seals sharks fish and crabs so um all of these different animals were aided by people in the pride strong movement who are going out and helping local animal related causes. Um, this goes into some of the distance. Uh, people like total in total traveled over 1200 miles. Um, they traveled to these places to volunteer. Um, also rescue walk, that became a big thing. It's that app where it measures like the amount of distance that you walk and then it donates to a uh, animal related charity of your choosing. Um, a lot of people were donating, like choosing care to donate money to, which was really awesome. Thank you so much for that. And a lot of people actually went out and walked with dogs. They went to different animal shelters and they, they walked uh, some of the dogs and exercised with them. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, okay, so measuring the impact, right? Like Rescue Walk is kind of an, a surprise. We weren't expecting so many people to like really utilize it, but we, we did and we felt like we wanted to, to include like a portion of the uh, infographic here. So 17 volunteers, they walked for care. Six volunteers walked for other animal uh, shelters. In total, 23 volunteers were walking and they walked many miles. And uh, yeah, that's really awesome. So also wait, because you know, you, like sometimes, hey, care muscles, care muscles, you gotta pick stuff up. Um, over 2,000 pounds of food were fed to um, all the animals. And then you have 972 pounds of materials transported, whether it be uh, building materials or whether it be uh, whatever that they needed transported to the facility or that were used by whatever facilities were being helped. You had 417 pounds of waste cleaned. This is like poop, like a lot of poop in this in this section right here. There's a lot of poop. And then like 211 pounds of material cleaned. So um, like let's say that you go into like a field and there's like a bunch of rocks and like dead branches and stuff like that. This is what this number is kind of measuring. Ultimately, 22,000 square feet of area um, was uh, uh, cleaned. So that means like all of the kennels, all of the enclosures, all of the animal spaces were added together and it equaled to about 22,000 square feet, which is pretty amazing, pretty awesome. Um, we also have administrative tasks, so people were helping out by answering emails and they were doing phone calls and they were filling out forms. So this was a really important thing, managing social media for different things. We had a lot of people doing a wide variety of administrative tasks for the, uh, for the different uh, organizations that they were helping out. And this is the financial benefit. And this is where like, it's, it gets uh, uh, pretty cool too. And uh, you have $1,100 saved in the form of contracted labor. Because again, if you have volunteers who are willing to give their time to do skilled labor tasks, that translates into money. That translates into money saved by a lot of these nonprofits. That's what we were trying to measure. Um, also, we had uh, you know $937 worth of in-kind materials collected or delivered, and um, so it's like we have we have a lot of we have a need for like chicken drumsticks at care, and um, that costs money. We have people that donate packages of chicken drumsticks, and and that stuff adds up. So you can say that that's an in-kind donation. That's a material that is collected or delivered to the facility. Um, and then $695 were raised directly. And then this is also based on um, $23.56 per hour is the national estimated value of volunteer time. Um, this is from uh, independentsector.org. And when using that information, 248 volunteer uh, hours equals out to about, you know, over $5,000. So that's the total amount of, uh, of uh, you know, per hour volunteer time that we as a collective group were able to amass. That's, again, cool. This is so cool. Like the idea that we're like having this much impact and, and we are uh, generating these types of numbers. Now this is where it got kind of interesting too. Um, again, uh, uh, Jeff and Melanie, they were, they were 
using these computer programs that they had access to and they were like crunching numbers and they were using these really complex algorithms to uh, find certain like qualitative themes, certain narrative themes. They were doing like word catch like kind of things because people were writing, you know, essays. They were like talking about their volunteer testimonials or what it is or why it is that they were volunteering. And then these were like the common themes that were showing up. Um, love and concern for animals, of course, is number one. Local and community need. There were a lot of people who are fans of care, the big cat Derek of Pride Strong, and they wanted to be part of the whole movement. So that's some of the reasons why um, people were wanting to volunteer. Um, and then this goes into some of their like individual testimonials. And again, we have a lot of text that's coming up. I'm not going to read every single thing. Um, I'm going to read a couple things, but you can pause the video and you can read it if you want. Or you can actually go to the different uh, things that I, I had mentioned or the link below and then you can actually you can see it for yourself um, yeah people that uh, wanted to do local and community need they adopted cats and then they had talked to oh my friend mentioned that they are a rescue that is struggling they recently had to close one of their locations so I figured this could help at least a little this was really important and um, I wanted to illuminate that part because this event was getting people out and it was getting people to those facilities who desperately need help who really truly are struggling and they don't know how they're going to be able to to manage the workload and manage uh, their 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 finances and sometimes all it takes is just a couple extra helping hands to get out there and to and to give a little bit of the the oomph give a little bit of that push that's needed um, okay and then uh, people who are uh, you know they're fans of the content and this is great because the content is able to to bring so many people together it's able to formulate the pride strong concept the pride strong movement and and that's such a huge reason why um, I, you know like we, we we've relied so heavily on social media me and care and pride strong and all that stuff um, because it brings people together and I, I really liked the this section um, right here, I'm motivated to help care consolidate its relationship with the pride as this ultimately brings more attention and resources not only to care, but in the context of this project to other animal organizations. That really um, encapsulates like kind of the, the, the vision statement that I had for the Pride Strong movement and, and this whole Pride Strong week long thing. This right here, this little, this, this sentence right here, this is really what I wanted to accomplish. I wanted to bring people together. I wanted to bring attention and resources, not only to care, but I wanted folks to get into uh, helping out other animal organizations. Oh, on a side note, this is Milo. It's Milo. Say hi to Milo right there. Milo, look at that handsome fella. All right. <laughs> um, this kind of goes through again, it kind of, um, breaks down some of the uh, tasks performed and uh, experiences. Again, narrative themes, um, uh, doing the, the word capture analysis kind of thing. Um, more narrative themes and volunteer stories. This this is really cool. Again, you can pause the video and read the different things or you can actually go and see the uh, Thing. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna read everything. This uh, this lady, she was doing rescue walk, and then she was actually working at a camp where she was taking kids to um, see uh, animals, and she was talking about frogs and salamanders in their natural habitat and how important it is to preserve those things. And so she was not only using rescue walk to help care and raise money for care, but then she was uh, talking to kids about the importance of nature. So she was she was double teaming it. She was like just going and just doing all sorts of impact stuff. Um, so that was really cool. Oh my gosh, holy wall of text. This was a kayak trip. This was a kayak trip. So um, this uh, girl and her dad, she was, uh, they were on a kayak trip and she was rescue walking the entire time. Um, so that was really cool. And they were like seeing like birds and nature and stuff like that. And uh, part of their testimonial, um, they were actually cleaning up fishing line uh, from like some places that are washed up on some islands. So they were actually out in nature and they were helping to clean stuff off. And technically it wasn't like an animal related like charity organization, but we totally kept this one. And that was really because, you know, it, it absolutely fit the, uh, the Pride Strong week long theme. It was, that was cool. That was really awesome that they, that they went out and did all that stuff. Um, okay. They, uh, this, uh, they were helping out at a uh, at a dog and puppy rescue place. There's pit bulls and cats, and they were helping to play with them and socialize them so that they can hopefully get adopted and have some really good forever homes. And uh, this lady was doing rescue walk for different organizations, not only care. So yeah, really cool stuff. 
um, future plans. And we were asking people, how likely are you to volunteer for this organization again? How likely are you to participate in another Pride Strong week-long event? And a lot of people said, yeah, totally. I totally want to do it. Very likely going to do this again. And I like this one right here. How, how likely are you to volunteer for this organization again? We had a lot of people who had either never volunteered or they never volunteered for the specific organization that they went out and and helped. And this right here means like, you know what, I'm going to go out and I'm going to keep on doing that. And that's a big part of what the Pride Strong movement's all about. Planting the seeds of getting people to go out and act. Not just hit the like button. Not just sit there and say like, oh, that's sad in a comment section and then just go about their lives. They're actually going out into their communities and they're doing something. It's I'm so excited. I'm so proud of everyone who participated in this whole thing. And it's right here, as is who did the thing. Project director is Derek Ron. Who's that guy? Sounds like a sounds like a dummy head. <laughs> um, but uh, Jeffrey Steinberg, we had Melanie Cohen. These two, uh, the brains, the brains on these two. I can't even begin to tell you how how amazing it is to have them uh, uh, helping out. And uh, Emily Smood, Kit Crispin, Missy Maria, um, they were helping out. Uh, Steve the Runner, another individual who helped out early on. So thank you so much to all the people who um, helped make this possible and then to all the volunteers who went out into their communities. Um, there's a couple different things. We had some really awesome feedback from people. I want to uh, get pridestrong.com up and running. Uh, and then, you know, have things like message boards so that people can actually coordinate uh, volunteer events amongst themselves. And, you know, we can really kind of create this big sense of community. This is so cool. So I'm, I'm blown away by how successful this first Pride Strong week long uh, was. And, and it's all because of the folks out there and it's all because of you folks who decided to, to go out and... And, and participate and take part in it. And this is going to be the first of many. This, we're not going to stop doing this. We're going to keep going on. We're going to keep on doing more of these. And we're going to keep on gathering information and asking people to fill out surveys. And we're going to see where this Pride Strong train goes. Um, I'm, I'm really, really excited to, to see that. And I want to thank every single person out there who, who, who did, uh, who helped. Yeah, yeah, it's really awesome. I don't really have anything else uh, to say, so um, hopefully you liked my little presentation, my, uh, my PowerPoint. <laughs> um, but uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much for watching the video, and uh, stay tuned for uh, information about the next one. So, all right. Bye-bye, folks.